All right, Damon, well, welcome. Okay, so tell me, how did you get involved in the game of hockey? Growing up, my, my mom took me to outdoor rinks when I was just a little, little kid. You would always say, well, I was the one who first started out taking you out to the rink, and we would skate, and then eventually you just put a stick in your hands and start shooting around and playing with a puck. Started young, and um, I was just a sports junkie, really. I just loved to, loved to play sports. And When you started off at playing hockey, where do you feel that that passion came from to continue that drive? Yeah, I, think, I think I just loved the game so much that, that I played hockey was my first choice and then baseball was my second and I've, I had a couple coaches telling me growing up that I should choose baseball over hockey but they had never seen me play hockey and I was more into hockey than baseball just being from Canada and I was good at hockey. I felt like I was a little bit better at hockey than baseball so ultimately just kind of made the decision well I'm going to stick with hockey I'm going to just do what I, I like more really is what ultimately came down to and chose hockey and uh, I guess it ended up working out in the long run so. So we're sitting in this really nice car. What do you remember of your first car? What was that experience like? Uh, yeah that's actually funny yeah. My first car was, it was a really long car and my dad thought it was the coolest car ever like I got my driver's license about two weeks or three weeks before I had to go to Kelowna for my first uh, WHL season and uh, so it was kind of like getting my license and he's like if you get your license you can take this car out there and uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was something that car. Yeah, I mean, it got it got me around, so I can't complain with that. If my dad watches this; he'll be laughing. He'll be missing it. So. Well, that's awesome. Thank you very much for doing this. I really sure. appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so for having seat me. Seatbelts on and yeah. get out of here. <laughs>has been a motivated player. It's more about keeping myself among the elite players in the league. I feel like I've included myself in that conversation now and it's about staying there. We have a, a great group to get better with. I'm excited to be back. It's hard to make the playoffs. It's a blank canvas now. We need to understand that last year was a step in the right direction. We want to make sure that we take a big step forward this year. It's a whole new season. I just want to go out there and play as hard as I can, help the team win and that's what I try to do. We turned the page. Last year was last year. We, we can't be satisfied with what we did. It's about playing for each other and, and making sure you're, you're doing everything you can, whether it's on the ice or off the ice, to make sure you're not letting that guy down next to you. Every great hockey team begins from the understanding that it's the choice to measure beyond commonplace that can ascend them to the apex of the sport. After a season defying their critics, the Devils begin their NHL season abroad at the Scandinavian Arena in Gothenburg, Sweden, with their focus fixated on the highest prize. The Brotherhood in New Jersey once again finds themselves in the position where they must come together in order to contend for their place amongst the NHL's best. The view is brighter for fans in New Jersey, and the time has come when the Devils must leave it all out on the ice as they begin another 82-game odyssey. We showed up in Philadelphia and, and the t-shirts were in our stall. It wasn't really something that we talked about. If I had to put it into words, it's everyone pegging us last before the season started. You look at every publication, all these experts out there, they, they didn't give us a chance at the start of the year. I think we, we, we still look at that. We still come into games thinking, okay, the, this team was projected 25 points ahead of us. Let's see how this game goes. I think there's a lot of guys in our team that have a lot to prove, myself included, and you know, we embrace that. In a race to the top, it is the most difficult of contests that brings out the best in an athlete. Through 64 games, the Devils have faced the fiercest of competitors and have shown they are a team that brings a relentless offense and fast style of play. But in order to obtain a postseason berth, they must push themselves and continue to prove that they not only deserve to stand where they are, but their future at hand on their 82-game odyssey. Taylor Hall takes a three defender, score! Taylor Hall with a blistering shot! In every journey, there are many paths that can lead to uncharted destinations. Whatever path chosen, it is that uncertainty that can become your future. In a season of hockey, true conclusiveness can be a matter of a team's determination and what compels them to elevate to a higher level of the sport. This is where the story of the New Jersey Devils season culminates, not only in what they have endured, 
but what they have discovered within themselves. The moment has come where everything is on the line for a young team's desire to contend for hockey's highest mantle. This is the final chapter of their season-long journey as the Devils conclude their 82-game odyssey. Overtime does well to control, plays it ahead, here's Hall, in alone on Murray, Hall shoots, he scored! Oh, Murray got a piece, that's all, Taylor Hall in overtime, 27 seconds in, ends it. Absolutely remarkable. All right, boys, here's a couple things. Uh, Keep drinking. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go, uh, special team, excellent job there. Uh, one uh, PK and, and the uh, penalty, kill, penalty kill battle, which was huge. Four and two on the road trip. That's a hell of a job, boys. Great, 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 gritty win. Halsey game one. Ah. Oh. Um, that was a great job, boys. Way to gather ourselves in the second period there. That's how we have to play for the rest of the year. Part of being a professional athlete is staying in condition, being ready for practice, and preparing for games. My diet on a game day consists of you know, an omelet, you know, breakfast potatoes. We get lunch, usually it's two grilled chicken breasts with uh, some kind of veggie, just anything to keep your stomach full for the game. Hydration is definitely important for uh, your readiness, you know, preparing for games, because you want to get the most out of your body. After breakfast, get to the rink, we'll always stretch. We have pre-game skate, get to the rink, and then I have a whole game day routine that's uh, you know, <laughs> kind of superstitious. Post-game recovery is definitely key. You gotta stretch it out. You don't want your muscles aching the next day. My conditioning routine usually consists of going on early for practice, 15, 20 minutes, work with goalie coach, and then you're warmed up for practice, get a little condition, light condition, make sure your muscles are and body's ready for whenever the game day is. Over the course of the season, you know, there's ups and downs throughout the season, whether you feel good, whether you feel bad, but it's all maintaining that healthy off-ice living. This is what keeps me ready for the long NHL season, and that's how I stay in the zone. And that game seven, I always wanted to be the guy to be out there. And like every kid, like every hockey player, want to be out there in the crucial situations and to score that game-winning goal. And that game seven, the second goal is the most important goal of my career that I scored. With a wooden stick, still, like I said, a little broken play there. Uh, Miss shot by Jason, snuck from behind by Danny McGillis and just shoved it in the net as quickly as possible in just perfect timing. It was that moment that put the Devils in the 2000 Stanley Cup Final where they faced the defending champion Dallas Stars. In game number six, Eliash completed a once-in-a-lifetime pass to Jason Arna. Boy, they got a couple of screens the Devils did in front. Back to the point, Stevens stepped up to hold it in, did. Hull stole it, Stevens holds it in again. Shot it right through the top of the crease. And the ice center shot, score! The New Jersey Devils have won the Stanley Cup! Jason yeah, amazing feeling. I People ask me what I felt, and I, I just, I always say that I felt um, relief that it's over. <laughs> and then the excitement and the happiness comes after that, but it was uh, just a relief because you don't realize how much uh, it takes out of you mentally and uh, and physically. You know, it's not just the playoffs, but it's the training camp and the uh, obviously the regular season and the up and downs, the injuries and the pressure uh, that goes into the, each game, each play. And but that's what it's all about. It forms you as a player how you how you react in those situations. You know, on that play, uh, it was just an amazing feeling that Jason could have. Uh, you know, put that puck into it because uh, the last couple of games of that uh, finals were unreal. You know, some great hockey was played uh, at that time. On April 8, 2017, Patrick Eliash came out for warm-ups on what would be his final game of an unimaginable NHL career. He was set to retire after almost two decades of NHL hockey and a pair of Stanley Cup wins. I never envisioned myself when I was growing up uh, playing in NHL, playing for one team, one organization, playing that long and ha having accomplished what I've done. It's pretty incredible. You battle through injuries, etc. And I was lucky enough uh, not to have that many. That 18 years for one organization, I'll take it. With so many career accomplishments to choose from, one might think it would be hard to choose a favorite. But Eliash has the simplest of answers as to which meant the most to him. 
Yeah, people ask me what's my biggest achievement and this is it. Uh, you know, it is uh, spending it playing for one team my whole career and it never may be seem that way that it's gonna happen but uh, at the end of the day it did and uh, I'm very proud of it. Eliash has so much to say about the Garden State but nothing more poignant than what he says New Jersey has meant to him. My home, you know, it's, it's simple. Uh, not just the house, but the, the community, how much you become part of the community. Uh, the schools, the, the, where you go shop, you know, your grocery shopping, basic stuff. And especially towards the end of my career, I, I got so much love and respect from, from the people here. And you realize how much they, the fans mean to you, especially after, after you're done. People everywhere in them, you know, train and uh, and schools and grocery shopping, p policemen. You know, I, I I I went through traffic or something, or just when I was I'm supposed to, I roll down the window and go say, oh yeah yeah, go ahead. You know, this is fine. You know, if, thanks for you know being a devil for that long. What you've done for us, it's just unreal. You know, how much support they gave me over the course of my career because I'm very thankful for that. Looking back on such an expansive career, there comes a question. How should we remember the man known as Patty? Well, at first you want to be a good player in NHL. You want to get your spot here, uh, make your mark. You want to win the cup. You want to be uh, the best player that you can be. You got good years, you know, you have bad years. It's a great job that we've had. So we got to feel privileged that you can keep that job and you got to do maximum every night. Patty was a guy that did whatever it took to win. And, and to me, that's the best kind of teammate. I mean. He was, he was a leader because he understood the game so well. He's the type of guy that just laid it all on the line and, and the moment was never too big for him. He was loved by the fans and certainly he treated them with respect as well. He never took anything for granted. You know, he was a teammate that led by example. What he did on the ice was kind of how he led. And to just see the way that he handled himself that way. It wasn't me, 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 it was you know team, team, team. He was so humble, and I don't think people realize that. And I always say, like, he was the quietest thousand-point player. He really cared about the game of hockey. I think he, he played a certain way, and he expected everybody to play at the same level. And uh, I think his intensity was uh, really one of uh, his key attributes. But uh, just a good friend, you know. Uh, we've uh, went through different generations of Devils uh, with the older guys early on in his career, and at the end uh, with some of the younger ones.